Welcome to the Conscious Relationship and Coupling and Parenting Summit. It's me, Lucia Gabriela, your host and producer. And today we have two amazing individuals that I truly love and adore. And ah, gosh, every time I see this couple on Facebook, they just like give me chills. They embody the talk and they're a lot of fun. So Dr. Heike and Jonathan Haston have committed their life to changing the way men and women experience relationships and sexuality. In a world where fear, past hurt, and shame keep people from the closeness and depth they desire. This couple is passionate about teaching new ways of relating, what they have named Sextraordinary Living. It's, it's today new uh, modern and healthy blueprint to live a truly turn on life in and outside of the bedroom where men and women get exactly what they need and want without the drama. As San Diego prominent sex educators and sexual healers, Dr. Heike and Jonathan are the creators of Sex and Love Unplugged Meetups and the Pleasure on Purpose Healing System used in their signature program for men and women. Together, they have created a master blend of spirituality and sexuality that they teach and embody in their own life. And I can, I can guarantee that one, yeah, that's true. They are both clinical sexologists and bring over 25 years of combined expertise in human sexuality, somatic body work, naturopathy, spiritual counseling, energy healing, and neurolinguistic programming. The clients from around the world experience extraordinary shift in their relationship, sex, and love life, business, and help. Welcome, Dr. Heike and Jonathan, to our summit today. Thank you, Lucia. So happy to be here as always yeah. and see your smiley face. And you just the introduction. Yeah. It's all about just <laughs> today <laughs> oh my god because you guys are so delicious <laughs> yes i mean meeting you in person guys you can feel the energy all the extraordinary interviews that we have done on youtube has been amazing you you know just just knowing you it's just a delicious um place to be so for our community or those who don't know you how do you guys started in the journey of a uh, conscious relationship? Oh, you baby, it's your favorite story. Well, <laughs> I think a conscious relationship comes out of your own consciousness and, and your own inner journey. And um, really you're taking full responsibility for your life, for your experience and for your creations and also the creations that you don't like. And so then it kind of goes organically into when two conscious people meet to create a conscious relationship. And our number one ingredients for that is really authenticity and transparency. Those are for us the biggest words that we have, giving each other the freedom to grow, supporting each other mm -hmm. in our processes and bringing out the best and the worst <laughs> to just Get really better. use the relationship too as a, it's, to me it's still the biggest personal self-growth course you can ever take being together with someone else because everything will come up and out and relationships to me are a lifetime workshop and this is this is what i signed up for and i think the big thing for us is that when we met we were never going to do this relationship or thing again and we, we were both so happy being single we're like i can do this forever no more drama no more pain and meeting somebody who, who, who really takes care of herself so much the way that I take care of myself and not, not needing each other to be happy, but, but the complementing each other's life in, in such a beautiful way and that we can always be a mirror to each other. We can always be healers to each other. And on the other side of that is just such a beautiful, in-depth, honest, transparent relationship that I didn't even know was possible. <laughs> yeah, every time I see you guys, it is so beautiful to see the integration of you walking your talk. Like that's one of the things that we were focusing in the summit is to invite amazing individuals who are not just teaching from a book or teaching uh, from other people's experiences, but they actually teaching and sharing what they have integrated in life. And that's why it's like you guys, you, you, like, you guys embody it, 
and it's so inspiring uh, to see you like really living and walking the talk so that's why i'm so excited of today's topic is about how to keep your love life hot and juicy sure, that's right <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited for you guys. So, ah, it's going to be hot in here. <laughs> it will be, yes. That's the fire and the passion you bring into awesome. it. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. So, here we go. We're going to go into your presentation. After that, we'll come back for questions and answers, and then we'll wrap it up. So, here we go. Enjoy. Hot and juicy relationships. What does this really look like? And for us, it's really about being in, in this turned on state as much as possible. It's such an important and oftentimes overlooked part of conscious relationships when it comes to sexuality. And we will explain how sex is the nutrition that our bodies thrive upon and exciting ways to keep cooking it up. Yeah, you in love and it. outside of the bedroom. You love bringing sex and food together, don't you? Absolutely, because it is so closely related. And we will talk about this later too, um, because once we have that food connection, it just makes sense to everyone. So when it comes to hot and juicy in a relationship, um, what it looks like is to just keep the chemistry going, mm -hmm. you know, from the honeymoon to having it last rather than, you know, it falling down. And so you feel turned on and you give each other compliments, sexy compliments mm -hmm. throughout the day. Um, it can be as much as a French kiss in between chores, really taking the time to check in and to touch your partner, you know, as you pass by all of these, all of these different things of seeing your partner fresh and new in this adoration and telling him or her how sexy he looks or she looks and uh, whatever comes up. And I think I can hit right on the key. It's like, it's, it's, it's the whole idea that we see our partner new every day, every morning. And one of the biggest pitfalls that we see in relationships is people go through this really fun honeymoon stage. You're like, ah, I finally found that perfect partner, right? And the sex is amazing. And you can just lay in bed for hours. And you're like, it's going to be like this forever. And then life starts to get in the way. Or maybe they do the same thing your last boyfriend did. And we're like, ah, crap, here we go again. So that's the boredom trap, right? We, we become furniture for each other. Life gets in the way. Certainly kids get in the way. The work gets in the way, and, 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 and we start taking our, our partners and our love life and the very thing that fueled our beginning, this really hot, passionate sex, and it just starts to go away, leaving us feeling deprived and bored. And that, of course, is when the cheating starts, right? Or the masturbation to porn and, 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 and the hiding of things, because we're trying to feed that, back to the food analogy, we're trying to feed that thing that we lost from the original relationship yeah so how do we make it keep it fresh and really see that the connection between food and sexuality so sexuality in general is our life force energy it is our nourishment and it does feed us and it feeds into our relationship and anything we want to create out of this relationship and most of you listeners are conscious about your food choices. I would assume that. So the difference between fast food and a snack or a healthy snack all the way to a gourmet meal is when it comes to sexuality as well. What intention do we have behind how we approach food? How do we prepare food? What spices do we use? And how do we eat it? And, and what variety are we choosing and keeping it fresh? Mm -hmm. and we don't want to eat the same thing over and over every day, even if it's our favorite food. Mm -hmm. no. <laughs> we really want to have variety in, in our food choices. And to see your partner fresh all the time and to to spend some time apart and and even we take at least one day per week when, as we're living together in separate beds to just 
again meet each other all over again um, the next morning. So it's the surprises. And so when we talk about organic, and we're kind of using a little joke here with non-GMO sexuality, we are speaking about freshness. And much like we go into Sprouts or we go into the organic section of Publix you know, in, in Florida, <laughs> you know, can we shop? I think a lot of us would love to be able to shop every day to walk through the vegetable aisle and say, wow, let's look at this tomato or look at this apple and, and, and grab. Whereas a lot of times we take, we take vegetables and we throw them in our refrigerator and a week later they're stale and they're old and they're brown. The same thing is with your sex life. So showing up every morning or afternoon or whatever with, with a fresh set of eyes. And, and this is what I meant earlier by really seeing your partner fresh, fresh and juicy and yummy. And it's like, wow, what, what do I get to create with this, with this energy today? But as soon as I show up with the attitude of this is old or stale, and then it's, we're not organic anymore. We're eating box food. Absolutely. So how do we keep it, after all these years, fresh and yummy? It starts with how we greet each other. You know, when you, when you live together, and every morning it's like morning, or, <laughs> you know, your partner leaves for work, you come back, like, hi. Like, it, it falls into, eventually, into this routine, rather than, and sometimes it does take an effort. You're sure, tired. Sure. And, and you could just say this head nodding kind of greeting and at the same time you say, okay, I'm making this extra effort. He's coming and I'm celebrating him. I'm celebrating him coming home. Yes, it is every day, but every day is fresh and to keep this all with new eyes and including gifts. You go out in this world and you see something that you know your partner likes. You just bring it home. and. Whether it is flowers, the traditional one, or anything that you really know that your partner would love to have. Well, speaking of flowers, for example, one thing that I do in our relationship is Heike doesn't get flowers as a special occasion or as an apology. She has fresh cut flowers in her house 24-7 every day. Now, and they may sit here for a couple of days until it's time to get some new ones, but my point is I don't use that as a special occasion. I think you deserve fresh flowers for your beauty every day because every day you are a beautiful fresh two dozen roses to me um I, another, which i love, <laughs> I love. <laughs> another thing for keeping it fresh and yummy is that and what heike is even talking about on a higher level is we lose our polarity in relationships and remember when you two first met and there was this 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 huge attraction between you two but over time you start to give up what you enjoy to make the relationship and the partner happy. And then you kind of become like this non-charged up atom, right? That is just kind of flat. And so part of keeping it fresh and yummy are doing the kind of things that increase polarity, doing the things that you would love. If you love doing yoga and dance, go dance, right? And for me to go do the things that I enjoy doing so that we do keep those opposites attracting. And so there are some, we're, we're, next we're going to give you a lot of tools here along these lines. And it's really recipes for spicing up your sex life. So I just spoke about increasing polarity. So make sure you do things on your own, that you take time off for you, that you don't lose yourself. And as Heike said, one of the things we do in our own relationship is we do what's called a conscious separation. And that means once a week, we go into our separate lives and our separate corners and our separate bedrooms, and we, and we just stay with us so that in the morning, and every single time it happens, in the morning it's like, oh, hi, you again. I haven't seen you in a long time. And, and there is that freshness and juiciness. And there's also the girl time and the guy time. Yeah, really time. do the things that you don't give each other in the relationship because hanging out with women is completely different than hanging out with guys yep. and you create your own things. And so it's also about the breaking of old patterns. We, um, for example, get a new dress or we dress differently all the way to the bedroom with sexy lingerie and we've maybe got a new nice sexy piece that we bring in. Um, we eat differently and one of my favorite things is to really at your little dinner to eat with your hands and to feed each other to to really bring this into the daily life 
um, you travel differently, different places, new experiences, and all the way to sex. Usually we have these positions that, you know, we know they turn us on and we know we get to climax and, and we can do this all in five minutes rather than really trying new things. And my favorite thing is if that's the only thing to spice up your love life, get out of the bedroom and use the whole house. Go to the kitchen, use the dining table, anywhere you want to go. Um, except that the bedroom will already make a huge difference. Another thing is to really appreciate your partner. So we have a rule in our household that is 80-20, which means 80% appreciation and 20% not criticism, but adjustment to make the relationship better. So nobody wants to be told all the time what they're doing wrong in a relationship, but people love to be appreciated. Absolutely, and all the sexy compliments that we can give. Man, you look hot today, and I love your ass, or whatever it is, just really bring it into your daily life, because foreplay happens all day long, and you don't want to just drop it all the way and then start picking it up again. And so what are the magic words that you tell me sometimes that just fire me up? The magic words for a man in general yeah. is for... There's three magic words, actually. So one of the biggest thing men want to know that they're our hero. Mm -hmm. it's, <laughs> it's just when men know they are our hero, they live up to it by all means. Another one of my words is to tell Jonathan many times he's brilliant. Men love to be brilliant, right? And they figure out the plans and they, they fix things and they do all kinds of things. And to play on strength. To tell your man that he's strong is just, once again, he's going to carry you into the bedroom <laughs> <laughs> and take care of you. And for men, the one thing that you can say to melt a woman's heart especially in times where it feels like it's chaotic and she, she feels kind of all over the place on an issue, you can just tell her, you know what, baby, I got this. You watch a woman surrender into that and just falls in. It's like, oh, thank you. Uh, another thing to do is to stop taking sex so seriously. We so often look at it like it's got to be this serious, dramatic, everything's got to be in place kind of thing, but Sex is a playground. Sex is fun. Can, can you bring that, that, that childhood innocence back into your experience? Yeah, be like little kids and explore, and really explore. You already know a lot about your partner. You hopefully know a lot about yourself and your sexuality and what turns you on, but really take it to, to the sandbox. And that falls all the way into your communication and talking about fantasies. It's almost like a storytelling and out of that to actually go and create it so it's again sort of like little kids just going from oh you know let's make up a story and then we do the pretend if and we're really making it happen so this authentic communication thing that i could just spoke of is so critical in relationships because so many times partners are afraid to ask for what they really really want whether it's in sensuality or sexuality and the main reasons are because they're scared they're, they're, people are scared that they're gonna that, that their partner is gonna think they're weird or they're gonna abandon them and so we have come up with a really cool technique called the sexy sandwich technique and in, in all fairness I actually borrowed this from my friend Reed Mahalko and we've kind of modified it a little bit but we give you a free audio sample of this on our web page, which is at sextraordinaryliving.com. You get the sexy sandwich technique, and that is a way that you can ask for what you really want. Like, let's say you want a threesome, right? And usually your partner, you're scared to ever ask for that because she might be like, I'm not good enough or I'm not enough. So this is a way you can ask for what you want in a way to where you're really going to feel supported and your partner is going to want to lean in to help you. Now, that does not mean you're going to get a yes, so slow down a little bit with that one. But what it means is your partner is really going to hear you, understand, and be leaning in to want to help you. 
And so it's, it's just a fabulous technique, technique that we teach at our meetups. And it's what I personally use to ask for my own fantasies, and so does Heike. So wow. again, you can go to our website at www.extraordinaryliving.com. And you can listen to this audio technique and take that and run with it. And also, we have another free gift for you, our free orgasmic report that was written by Heike. Why don't you tell us about that? Well, we talked about in this presentation about the connection between food and sexuality. And there's also this other component of the way we show up in the bedroom is also how we show up in life. Whether you know we're holding back and we're not fully expressed and we have our fears and whatever. Um, and it also expresses in the orgasm report where the way you what kind of orgasm you experience or prefer says a lot about how else you show up in life. And of course, this is a playful report and it's to be taken lightly. And yes, it does give you a lot of clues. And if you change like your preferences in orgasm, you can also change your life. Or if you explore your preferences in orgasm, you yes. might experience different parts of life. Absolutely. Right? Okay, great. <laughs> So again, that's all available at www.sextraordinaryliving.com. And also on there, we are giving the free gift of booking a one-hour complimentary sensuality discovery session with Dr. Heike or myself. I don't know if I would call it sensual. I'd call it something more, more masculine and sexy, right? Like how to turn your, well, how to take a woman. How's that one? So if you want to talk to both of us or one of us, we're offering this free gift for being on this summit. All of that is available at www.sextraordinaryliving.com or just Google Heike and Jonathan and we're all over the place there. Yes, call us please, talk to us because you know sexuality and relationships are very individual yes. and to really see where you're at, what you're looking for, what you want more of or less of, we can definitely help you to discover what's possible in your relationship. So we just want to thank you all for listening today and, and watching and being part of Lucia Summit and for being here with us. And we really hope that you take the information, go home and make your relationship super, super juicy. And yummy and hot and yeah. spicy and all of that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was such an amazing presentation, uh, Dr. Heike and Jonathan. Um, I love when you guys talk about the roses and like, even though that, you know, you may have flowers all the time and around, maybe in the pot and outside in the garden, it's so important to have that, um, that token of appreciation uh, for your partner with roses, like, which is like, to me, it was like such like romantic. I mean, I'm a romantic person, so I totally, uh, I was enjoying that part. What other other token do you feel that it can be added to spice up the relationship? Well, coming back to the roses, for example, even though every week he brings me fresh roses, every week I receive them as something special. Mm -hmm. yes, right? Even <laughs> if that kind of becomes a ritual in a sense to, to bring flowers and, and that counts for anything else to still receive it as if it's the first time he brings roses rather than oh thank you okay it's Friday here's the roses right and so anything that your partner does that you do really appreciate and even if it's on a regular basis you again see it always fresh with these new eyes of wow he's bringing me roses and there's such deep gratitude in that and appreciation so the more you appreciate your partner this is really one of the biggest things, too, to keep it fresh and juicy, the more you appreciate your partner for what he or she does, whether on a regular basis or every once in a while, is just really building up and feeding into your relationship. And as far as other tokens, um, I mean, for me in the masculine, I like to do things around the house for her, whether it's, and, and you know, I know some of it's stereotypical, but like, don't touch the trash, right? That's mine. I mean, I, 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 even when my, even when she offers to take the trash out, I'm like, no, that's, I want to have these kind of masculine, I, and think, and then at the same time, I'm on the other side. I love to cook for her. That is my token of love and appreciation. And yet, when she cooks for me, I'm in this super gratitude too. So we're, again, we're always just really 
appreciating. And one of the things she does amazing for me as not only my lover, but as my sexual healer as well, is that she's always really cognizant and asking me what I need. What do I need in the bedroom? What do I need to feel complete at the end of a session? You know, say, say it's focused on her or I give her a massage. While it's never really about me per se, she always, always goes out of her way to make sure that I feel complete as well. And that's one thing I love about you so much. Thank you. Well, and, and the surprises too. Jonathan always says, like, he's, he's, he has a hundred women in me. That's and true. That is the variety of the feminine and of women. And showing up in the bedroom in different characters, energies, aspects, whatever we want to call it. So How can I get he, never, he never knows what's going to happen. Sometimes I'm in this gentle, tender space and this lovey-dovey space, which is what we call it. And sometimes I show up with, with handcuffs, <laughs> right? And he doesn't know what's going to happen. Exactly. And then we have all kinds of things even within the bedroom, whether it, it goes into wrestling or it goes into into tons of different ways. What I'm really getting to is let the bodies lead and and see what wants to be created. Like sexuality is a co-creation. Now, now guys, how can you ever get bored with that? <laughs> I like to say I'm Polly because I really do have a hundred different women here and I never know what I'm gonna get. Women, you keep this happening in the bedroom and your man is going to keep coming back because it is the variety. It is the, am I gonna get the Amazonian warrior today or am I gonna get the, the soft, you know, Juliet's energy, and, and it's, it's, it's really amazing. So, what I'm hearing, oh my gosh, I, I tell you guys, right? Like, they're so juicy. <laughs> Your energy is so delicious. So, what I'm hearing is the aspect of working with the many aspects. Uh, archetype that we have as being not just keep it with just one specific one but like learning to dive into your different archetype or different aspect of your persona and your being and and just keep it playful in the relationship yes very absolutely much. so I believe that there is I don't know the statistics on this but I'm just maybe making it up from what I'm hearing and my uh, uh, all the clients that have done and also the couples like one of the biggest complaints that people has is in the couples have is um, the aspect of, of you know taking the trash right like Jonathan was mentioning uh, you know the, the aspect of the caring of the house the aspect of caring of the, the outside of the car of this and that and how can we couples be able to transcend the bitterness and the resentment that create when one individual in the relationship does not feel that they want to take the garbage out. Like they just don't want it. Like they maybe were not raised that way. Like whatever the reason is. And the other person is like maybe a um, very clean person. And, and you know, believe it or not, sometimes I find like the, the most stupid reasons and excuses that couples argue about and they get resentful about is then that had you uh, take care of the house. For some reason, I don't know, like I always hear it, like people fight for that the most. So maybe because that's my spectrum of observation. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but how, how can we help couples? How can, what would be your uh, wisdom, uh, your advice, your, your golden nugget? for them who are struggling and just that very simple i know it sounds stupid but we have no idea how many times like people get just and the resentment get bigger and bigger and bigger because thing is not just the dishes and not just the uh, dishwasher it's not just the uh, uh, you know clothes and doing the lawn and blah 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 it creates like little energies of resentment and that build up and then when something different shows up it's like a huge bomb exploded well, for us, it starts with what do we like to do more and not so much. And ideally, we have different priorities and different, different likes and dislikes. Um, so kind of getting the chores and who takes care of this and, and that, to get this really clear and divided by 
what's easier for one. You know, one likes to empty the dishwasher, it's not a big deal, and one likes to take out the trash. Um, where we make it, again, juicy is, it's kind of like, as we know as kids, right? We have these stars or allowance, like rewards. You know, there, there's something still to be said about the human condition about reward systems. And we take it all the way to, if it's a, if it's a bigger job, to really say, okay, I really don't want to do this. And yet, um, if you do this, maybe we can do a hand job. <laughs> I'll give that to you. Or I'll take out the trash the for that massage, Or like we really trade sexy things too with these chores, meaning again, we're bringing the sexiness in it. And, and to really, it's that igniting of constantly thinking about really the erotic side, the erotic mind, and, and to engage that, because we do know what our partners love. And by the way, I don't even like to call it hand job, because it's not even a job. It's like really an, an offering. It's I get as much turned on as he does, so it's not even a job for me. But he's motivated, right? He's like, okay, good, I'm going to do this now. <laughs> and then what time do I get my return? To really figure things like that out too. And there's sexy ways to do household chores. Um, yes. uh, when I vac when I when I vacuum the house when she doesn't want to, I just do it naked. Because I know when I'm vacuuming naked and walking around her and she's sitting on the couch watching me, all of a sudden <laughs> she's not she's not only happy I'm vacuuming, I'm vacuuming naked. And so you never know where that's gonna end up. That's the kind of stuff that, that we do. But what Heike said earlier, it's about communication way before all of those triggers get built up and the frustrations that get built up, when you can sit down as a couple, and this is, this is just the, the core to everything we teach in conscious relationships, is transparency and authenticity in your communication. So never swallowing your truth. Way before it blows up into some anger, can you sit down with your partner and say, you know what, I don't like vacuuming. What do you... Can I do something else? Can I be the one that dusts the house and you vacuum? Does that work for you? And start to make those agreements. Or maybe this week I'll vacuum and next week you'll empty the dishwasher. All those kind of things. And, and I mean, a, another thing that we practice in this household is if, if somebody doesn't like the way I load the dishwasher, then load it yourself. And, and, I, and, I, and the way, what I say about that, it, it's, it's, big for men. it is big for men. If I load the dishwasher, it may not look perfect, but you know what? Let the damn dishes run. They're still going to be clean. They may not be the way that you, she would have put them in there all tidy and organized, but the point is the dishes got clean. So don't complain about it. And that's a, because that's probably one of the biggest things that happens too, is if, if a man goes to load the dishwasher, and the woman complains about how he loaded the dishwasher, guess what? He's not going to load the dishwasher anymore but because he doesn't want to hear the complaining. And on the other hand, as a woman, you, as the woman in this particular case, you need to let go yeah. of control, right? To just say, okay, he's done, he's done, and he's doing it his way. Um, because otherwise, what we see so much, too, with couples, then, you know, you end up doing it all yourself. And you fight, and I feel bad because I loaded the dishwasher wrong, and then I'm pissed off because you don't appreciate me. And this is where that frustration comes from. But as soon as we surrender to it and say, you know what, okay, he's a Gemini, he loads the dishwasher chaotically, he leaves his drawers open, I'm just going to shut him anyways because he does so much other stuff for me. It's the more you appreciate your partner, the more you will go out of your way to want to do those things that make the relationship better. But you've got to learn to surrender to those little things that may personally bug you. Yeah. When we come back, I love all the ideas, especially the naked vacuum. <laughs> That's fine. When we come talk about reward, because I have worked with reward, and sometimes what I feel is like, how do we defer, defer reward versus manipulation? Because I wouldn't like to tell my partner, oh, you can just do the dishes for me. I'm going to give you like spanky or something. Because how do we know that we are not crossing the aspect of like uh, manipulation and using sex as the, as the energy to get it done and then use it in like very not constructive or building way, but more of the 
you know what I mean? Like, well, is it, I don't know. I would reframe or I would answer with the question, is it manipulation when you're both end up having fun and more intimacy? Is that a manipulation? Repeat the question again. Like, if, if we're having both fun in this reward system, if we're having more intimacy through making these little deals, is that manipulation or does this really feed our relationship and our no, intimacy? That's, that's playfulness, yeah. yeah. That, and, it, you know, and you said the right word, playfulness. To really play with that, to be creative. To, I mean, we're, we're creating a relationship every day, over and over. We're creating our sex life every day, over and over. It is an aspect of creation, of co-creation. So to really see, you bring this to the table, I bring this to the table, here's your needs, here's my needs, and what can we create out of that? How can we be creative in that? And it's where it comes from. I mean, if you offer your partner a massage for doing the dishes and you really don't want to give a massage and it's yeah. work to you, yeah. then you're just trading doing, the, you might as well just do the dishes. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, really. Yeah. But if it comes from a place of, well, if you do the dishes, hmm, we can have some fun times. It increases that juiciness. And so you're doing a service to your partner by increasing the juiciness of the relationship while still getting the dishes done. And in that case, it's not manipulation, it is play. So where, search your heart for where you come from before you make that offer. Unless the manipulation is, he never gets what you're offering. That's true too. Mm. Right, then it's really like, I only give you the spanking if you do that. That's the manipulation. Yeah. So if it's, you know, something that is happening all the time, but now we're also saying, okay, we're training this with towards we're in a little game here yeah, and, not, totally. and not manipulation. So you just nail it. I think like it's the way that we communicate and we use our words because if you do playfulness, uh, you use playfulness in the communication and the energy in it instead of saying, if you do this, I do this for you. So yeah. there's a condition and that's what's like, okay, got it. <laughs> <laughs> love it. I love it. Ah, I feel like that's my right now, but that's great. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> I just love it. I don't know. I love this topic so much. And appreciation. And if there's no appreciation in a relationship, it's kind of like I said in the relationship to to go into the doom stage, like to die, to die the relationship. So I really, really love and I appreciate uh you know, you, you guys bringing up the, the recipe of inclusion, the polarity, breaking all patterns, appreciation, authentic communication. What if you have in a relationship one partner who is so into uh, making this relationship juicy and the other one is, is, is like in a verge. It is and it's not. It's like, it, it, it say they wants it, but actually the action doesn't do it. How do you think uh, somebody could deal with that? How they can take care of that? Well, you mean one shows up fully and the other one is kind of in and out? Yes. Again, to me, it starts with communication. And not in, in that, okay, I'm really upset right now, and you always do this, or you never do this, or whatever. It's actually to, to bring it to the table in a space of, you know, you're both doing great throughout the day, and let's bring this up right now. Um, how can we change this? I feel like I'm bringing more to the table. You know, how does it, how does it feel to you? And I would like to... Um, Think how we can have things differently. And once again, in a, in a relationship, you will hear the word from my end over and over. You're co-creating, right? And if, if one is creating and the other one is, you know, in and out, then you got to really look at, at what the relationship means to you, what your values are, and they might not be the same. 
and and still to see what are our strong suits and then and then take those out and and say okay well this is then where we choose up our relationship and where we both can show up fully this is where okay when it comes to for example he likes watching porn and i don't like watching porn okay then there's your area this is where you take care of yourself because you also have to see that we're no matter how much love and juiciness there is there's also always this responsibility of taking care of yourself mm -hmm. and our partner can't be like us he can't love like us he can't show up like us he, he, he just can't and to really see this as something good because you have the polarity you know we talked about polarity if we get turned into this whole mush thing of we're all the same we're all liking the same we're doing things the same way we're talking the same way then we get don't get to feel ourselves anymore and another thing to do is, is I, i've seen this pattern in couples where one of the partners develops an interest in a subject like tantra for example starts to read the book starts to pay go to webinars starts to learn and then sort of goes to their partner and says, I'm really missing out on this slow sex thing. I've learned about Tantra. Why aren't you more like that? How come you're not interested? And it, it's kind of an attacking energy. Whereas if that partner came with, a, with an invitation and saying things, wow, you know, I just learned another really yummy, juicy way for us to connect and for me to be filled up. Would you like to come to an event with me? I would think that he's, if the, that invitation is a yes, because men like to experience. And so that is a way that instead of making me wrong for not being a certain way or expecting me to read a book, I would love to go on the slow sex. <laughs> yes, if I'd have to have a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, it's the invitation too, and the not wronging or not shaming. And because, like, like Heike said, I, I can never be, I can never be her. And so there will be some areas that are only for her, but can she invite me in in a different way that includes me rather than makes me wrong? Mm, I love that inclusion rather than judgment. Mm -hmm. Very beautiful. Oh, I always learn so much with you guys. Thank you so much for being in our summit. This, this has been an amazing topic to explore and learn from you. Thank you, thank Lucia. Thank it's you. always a pleasure to see your smiley, yummy, juiciness, and we're just yeah, so happy to be here. <laughs> and your questions, all the questions you're drawing always so amazingly out of us, out of whoever you interview. So it's beautiful. Thank you. Okay. So how can we find you again? www.sextraordinaryliving.com <laughs> or if you forget that you can simply google Heike H-E-I-K-E -E, Heike and Jonathan we take up about the first 10 pages of Google if you do it that way you'll find us yeah, I love that oh, you're so delicious so yummy thank you so much for sharing your wisdom in this uh, summit I really appreciate you thank you so I also appreciate you, uh, amazing uh, viewers and community, and hopefully you had great tips and tools and strategies and insight in how to create a conscious relationship in your life. So this is for now, and we'll see you in the next episode. Have a great, fantastic day.